This episode is brought to you by Trump Mortgage. Good day. I'm Abby Overton, and this is The Real Deal. At the top of the news, state Democratic leaders are looking to fix the foreclosure woes of 28,000 New York homeowners. The LaFrac family is in contract to sell its Kings and Queens portfolio, and housing inventories are accumulating nationwide. That and more on The Real Deal webcast this week. But first, some highlights from our weekly interview. The media was all abuzz last week about how the Irish are snapping up condo properties in New York. While it's true that many Dubliners have been taking advantage of the price differential between Ireland and New York, Real Deal reporter Jen Benepe spoke to John Megan, who says the phenomenon could soon decline. And just how much have international purchasers been helping the New York market? Jonathan Miller, chairman of Radar Logic Research, helped us quantify the situation. Here are some highlights of their conversation. It is news here in the United States, it's old news in Ireland. Early 90s, the Irish economy took off. It became known as, known as the Celtic Tiger. Uh, a lot of the Irish became cash rich and they wanted to diversify. Uh, how much of the new condo market has been propped up by the international investor? I would say perhaps the description wouldn't be propped up, but it would be supplemented. Uh, that that I, I'd say new, on the new development side, foreign demand, it's probably accounting for somewhere in the neighborhood of 40%. Um, we have Dubai, mm -hmm. Asia as active, uh, probably more on the commercial side, but, but certainly uh, active in the market here, mm -hmm. and part of that is the exchange rate. For the full interview, please click on the link below. And now for the news. Democratic leaders in the state Senate have proposed legislation that seeks to help the approximately 28,000 New York State homeowners facing foreclosure this year. That number is a dramatic rise in foreclosure filings and is linked to the predatory lending practices of the subprime mortgage industry. The bill would give the state-run mortgage agency, Sony May, the power to provide refinancing for some troubled loans, earmark millions of dollars for community groups to counsel homeowners, and call for lenders to halt new foreclosures for a six-month period. The LaFrac family is in contract to sell a 2,000-unit residential portfolio in Brooklyn and Queens for $250 million. The properties have been dubbed the King and Queens portfolio. Sources would not identify the buyer, but the brokers for the sale are C.B. Richard Ellis's powerhouse duo Darcy Stacom and Bill Shanahan. Weak sales are leading to rising inventory in housing markets across the United States. According to data compiled in 18 major markets by Zip Realty Inc., the number of for-sale homes was up significantly by 7% last month. Meanwhile, the National Association of Realtors lowered its forecast for 2007 sales again last week. They now project that sales of previously occupied homes will be down 2.9% from the previous year. At a public forum last week, the Hudson Yards Development Corporation and the MTA presented design guidelines for developing Hudson Yards that they say addresses community concerns. The plan also achieves maximum possible revenue for the MTA, calls for 20% of the rentals on site to be built as affordable housing, and for additional affordable housing to be built off site. The guidelines also seek to preserve the southern section of the High Line. The city has approved plans for Donald Trump's controversial condo hotel in Soho. Opponents of the development said the 45-story project violated the site's manufacturing zoning since the property will be largely residential. The building is set to be the tallest between the financial district and Midtown. The owners of three interconnected buildings in Soho, 530, 532 and 536 Broadway, are looking to sell the properties for $250 million. The mixed-use buildings include tenants Dolce & Gabbana and Dina DeLuca. Residents of the Northwest Bronx cheered when they saw a proposal for the redevelopment of a city-owned parking lot last week. The as-yet unnamed four-story development will occupy a parcel at West 230th Street and Broadway in Kingsbridge. It will feature roughly 280,000 square feet of retail, a 16-screen multiplex movie theater, a 22,000-square-foot health club, and space for a major department store. The project will be a joint development between Ceruzzi Holdings and the Blumenfeld Development Group. State Senator Bill Perkins of Harlem said it was alarming that a portfolio of former Mitchell Lama properties had sold for $940 million. He also said no one knew about it. Jerome Belson Associates purchased all the buildings in the portfolio and had them taken out of the Mitchell Lama program over the past few years prior to the sale. The transaction was the second largest residential portfolio sale in Manhattan history as first reported by The Real Deal in early April. 
Taconic Investment Partners and Apollo Real Estate Advisors, the owners of a former Mitchell Lama rental complex in Brooklyn, have renamed the property. Once the Fairfield Towers, it will now be called Meadowwood at Gateway, as they await Attorney General approval to convert 983 of the units into condos. Deconic and Apollo have said they intend to make the units affordable to middle-class buyers and that they will offer discounts and incentives for purchases of the units by the complex's current rental residents. The investment partnership acquired the 19-building, 22-acre site last September for $90 million and pledged to put $40 million in capital improvements into the property. Mayor Bloomberg proposed establishing a year-round ferry service between the Rockaways and Lower Manhattan that would operate during the workweek rush hour. The Rockaways have long been underserved by public transportation. We want to be treated like the rest of the boroughs in the city, said one resident. Thank you for joining us for this edition of The Real Deal's webcast. Remember to click on the link below for this week's interview. Please join us next week for the latest real estate news. I'm Abby Overton, and this is The Real Deal.